Now you had a lot of surgeons threaten you uh, with an imminent demise if you didn't have immediate operation uh, no. performed. So how did you how did you see past that? I mean, here you are alive 20 years later. Why, why didn't all their predictions come true? Do First you think? of all, I learned to, to find out what their experience was, and I found that the the number of radical prostatectomies that were done by your, our average urologist was very low, sometimes only three or four a year. And then it turned out that the really statistical norm for being an expert in that procedure was to do 150 to 200 procedures. So when someone offers you his knife, uh, you want to know how many times that knife has been used. You had some scary moments, though. I remember one time, and I think this is before we met, the, uh, you were checking your PSA, and all of a sudden it really flew off the handle. Yeah, it spiked, as they say in the game. Um, but then it didn't stay. It dropped back again. And so I just watched it and began to learn what were the coordinates that told you that it was safe. Doing a regular PSA, finding that, you know, that it wasn't jumping, that it was staying as it should for my age. That was a very big deal. And, and not being encouraged to do biopsies uh, seemed to me very important, and you supported that. And uh, so I had, I had real coordinates to determine that it was safe to wait. We shifted from the term watchful waiting, which is kind of passive, to active surveillance. That's, that's not passive. Well, that I remember is. before I even met you, you'd been living with the disease for almost 10 years and you'd visited San Francisco on a couple of occasions, a, a um, MRI center, to have imaging done, which is a very forward-looking thing. question was, had the cancer spread outside the gland? Well, then I finally went to Holland, where they were doing the Combidex procedure, and that gave MRI a whole new uh, range of possibility, which really enhanced the value of an MRI.